one time he was in the hospital and he got very frail. My dad passed at 62. He was 62, excuse me. And I always had to look up to my father. He was so tall, he was my hero. And I just always admired him. Until I had to come and look down on him and he was very fragile. About 14 years ago, he was very thin and he had a lot of tubes all over his body. He was on a breathing machine, everything in the hospital, and I was just stunned. And he was slowly dying. And you know, he had cancer all through his body. Chemo, nothing helped him. Um, that, was, that was out of the question. So I just looked on to my father and he passed. And that cancer destroyed my father. Years later, Every year, I'll go to the doctor, get my annual checkup. I had to go and have a mammogram. It's not a fun experience going. You know it's not fun, right? I had to go and have a mammogram. And the nurse, she was there, she checked me in, and then they called me back. And they said, come back as soon as possible. The doctor needs to see you right away. It just startled me made me nervous. I was thinking, what's wrong? Oh, what? It can't be. I, I can't. It can't be. Not that word. No. I'm not going to even say it. That's that fear that took over me. And it just started consuming me, making me think. But I went in, and I had to get more testing. I had to have a, a ultrasound. I had two. There was two women look at me. And they called another person in. So that means I was thinking, oh, it must be serious. And it was out of control. I was out of control. I was paranoid. My thoughts were going. But before that, they'll come and they'll ask, and I'll always say, oh, I'll pray for this person. Oh, you're healed. You're sick. I'll pray for you. They'll call me. But now this is a different experience when it's about me. I struggle. Oh, I dealt with it. And when I'm in the situation, when I had another test, I cried, I bawled. And people say, I'm okay. I'm like, yes, I'm fine. I wasn't prepared for this. What do I do? What am I gonna do for my future? I have to go to therapy. I had all these thoughts racing through my mind. So I had to get in contact with the nurse right away, the doctor. So they told me, they said, I had a mass on my left side. Now my left breast, it wasn't uh, spreading or anything like that. And I asked, did I have a mask? They said, yes, you do, but it's not spreading. It's not spreading, but it took over my, my thoughts. So I went and started to have communion, and I asked God to heal me, and I did this over and over again because my other exam, it was a year later, but it was a mask. It was not even... Um, spreading and I was like it's here but I still prayed continuously I prayed I've held on to my fast and I said my, I asked God to heal me I asked God to continue to strengthen my faith and I held on a year later I went back for the test and they did everything they had to do and they said I said what about the mass and they said the mass is gone <laughs>
his leg's not sick. She has to get bold. So we started to speak over her life and start speaking in tongues. And I got very close to that lady. She was hearing. She was in a coma. And I just let her know. I said, we're here. We're praying for you. And we just started speaking in tongues. And we interceded for this lady. We had anointed oil all over her body. We just was pr praying in the spirit, interceding on her, her behalf. And we just faced that thing. I didn't have fear. We just stood up and faced it face on. Jesus. And pushed it out the way. Yeah. And removed that thing. And we interceded and she had a spiritual breakthrough. No. I left after that situation. I went home. A few days later, the lady who was with us, she texted me. And the lady said she woke up from a coma. Oh. 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 She was standing right there here. All right. Right there talking. She gave a testimony. She talked about what God did in her life. And she was just telling me, God is amazing. But the challenge was my personal, my personal warfare that I had to deal with. I had to put it into practice. What happened? And so when the time to ministry, my gift, I was bold to put it out. And the same thing for you. You, it starts with you, with your personal battle. If you can conquer your own personal battle, then you can conquer ministry and be effective there. And give you some inspiration to think. You need to make sure you have that relationship with God is very important. 